Can you can you hear me? Uh, let me turn up my speakers. You seem very very faint. I'm faint, am I? Okay, now it's much better. Now it's much better. Oh, cool, cool, cool. I'm um, I'm outside in a. Uh, you know, Sounds like in a cafe. In a, in a club. In a club. Yeah, yeah. Um, how are you doing? Oh, life is very dynamic. The dynamic range is quite high. Uh, but right now, yesterday, pretty calm. I'm actually very much anticipating moving in about two weeks. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to having a uh, kind of a longer chat with you um, when, when you're settled in. Yeah, sorry, I'm uh, kind of occasionally ping you a little bit and uh, unfortunately we've not been able to find that common time yet. That's okay, that's okay. I'm, um, I'm looking forward to spending uh, a few hours with Dino in, uh, in London on uh, Friday. Yeah, I saw that interchange. Yeah. Today is the 8th, yeah, so almost exactly two weeks from now on the 22nd, I take possession of my new rental uh, unit, uh, which should be a nice relief. Fantastic. Oh, quick question for you. I mean, um, location-wise, Seattle. Yes. Uh, I mean, forgive the dumb question, but um, how, how, far, how far is that from the Canadian border? Uh, probably about two and a half hours drive. Oh, not so it's not that far then? Not that far, no. Yeah, I've almost... When I go places, I could almost fly out of Vancouver. It's not much worse than flying out of SeaTac. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. And there's Dr. Laszlo. He is, he is. And now Dr. Laszlo can hear us. <laughs> My father's here? <laughs> <coughs> Great. Lovely to see you. Alexander, good, good morning. <laughs> What's the background noise we got? Uh, Gavin must be in a public facility. Yeah, so let, let me mute my, uh, let me mute. Oh, that's all right. Uh, Just wondering what it was. <laughs> ah, silence. Oh. Indeed. <laughs> oh my gosh. By the way, um, Last week's call, I thought it was really good to get everybody uh, introduced to each other. I've uh, invited at least one other. Come on. Hey. Good oh. afternoon. Hey. Well, we can't talk about him anymore. Because there he is. Uh, Dino. We can always talk about Dino, though. We can always talk about Dino. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was saying last week's call, we got a lot of people uh, uh, meeting each other for the very first time. And I'm hoping that this week, there's one other person that I've invited. I hope she actually comes. Uh, she's a fascinating person that I've come to know for the last uh, year, a little over a year and a half. She's on the uh, staff of UC Santa, San Francisco. And she's a scientist in neurophysiology. And actually studies a lot of uh, um, brain disorders and brain mechanics. And also is quite, quite interested in you know, mirroring the world of neuroscience and spirituality and uh, collaboration. So I think she's a fascinating person. I hope she actually does attend today. Her name is uh, Dr. Sonok Lee, S-E-O-N-O-K-L-E-E, -E -E, Sonok Lee. So she actually listened to our entire call from last week. And did say she was fascinated, wanted to join. I'm certainly hoping she does. Okay, so again, out of respect for those of you who are here on time, uh, since Dr. Lee is not here yet, I thought I would pose the question, do I have a proper framing for collaborology? Okay, each of you comes with your understanding. So I have actually uh, proposed myself a definition of collaborology that I'm going to share right now. And uh, very briefly, I'm going to share my screen, which is my page of 300 terms and concepts. Um, but in it, uh, definition number 57 is collaborology. So I wanted to see if uh, 
it made sense for you, okay? So let me share that screen. Okay, so hopefully you can see my screen now. Let's see who just showed up. Froda, Froda just showed up. Okay, so you can see that, uh, let me just quickly go through this particular page for those of you who haven't seen it yet. Here's the top of the page, starting from the ABC model. And let me flip through quickly. Briefly, you can freeze your frame when you actually come back to this if you want to see all, all of these. Uh, Anti-fragile, AOB, brainstorming, Kodiak, cognitive surplus, collaborology, there you go. Uh, why is it not? Okay, so collaborology, let me go here. This definition here. Wait a minute. Oh, here we go. It's in two different places, okay? All right, so this is definitely a problem since I don't have the tools and I can't alphabetize uh, properly. So this is the definition that I've been using to describe collaborology to others. And this one reads, it's the principles and practices of successful scalable collaboration. And the note here is scalable uh, up to global scale, okay? So this is the implication that I, that I have here. So if I've actually got a different definition here, this is probably an alternate early definition. The science of collaboration, how collaboration scales, how it manages to come better than any proper subset of any proper group or community, okay? So this, I think, let me just uh, add this one notion and then I'll turn it up uh, open for discussion. And that is that by successful, it means that any group that continues to grow in size, okay, that's a, the scalability notion. However you look at the work product or the results or the actions or the output of that team, it has to be in some sense better than any proper subset. Any proper subset in mathematics is of course, you know, uh, a subset, and I hope you guys get that notion up to and including the, the team itself, okay? From zero all the way up to N, where N is the size of the group. Ideally, if, if collaborology applies, the output of the team is better as the team grows, okay? It's a very, very difficult notion. And I think historically, we've not really managed to do it well. But uh, let me just introduce that this is how I'm thinking about collaborology, okay? Now, Alexander, you have something to contribute here. Please do. Uh, two things. Um, scalable, I, I can't go from zero. It would have to be from two, I would imagine, because otherwise we're not dealing with a collaborator. Good point. Excellent catch, yes. <laughs> so it has to be from two up. Yes. Right? Yes. Unless we're dealing with multiple personality individuals, which, no. Uh, deal with that. Uh, that could be a given, yes. <laughs> that could, that's, that, it can, that's, that's, you know, you got a collaborology within one. You can do that. <laughs> that actually could be. Weird. That actually is a subset of collaborality, by the way. I can imagine. That later. Yep. Yeah. Working within your own, <laughs> with your own family system. Yeah, not being self-destructive. Yes. Right. Right. Okay. Well, in any case, if we're looking at community, community is defined as you know uh, two or more people. Yeah. Right. In interaction, so it might be two up, um, and I am exactly putting here something that has to do you know that from my work with the World Evolution and Learning Tribes, we had the. The, the local, we had a specific project, then we had local evolutionary learning times, regional and global. Yes. So that's also part of the, the scalability. I just want to pop that in. And that's why I've wanted to have this conversation with you for so many years, Alexander. I know, I know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Gavin, you also had something to add here? Yes, yes, please. So, a um, couple, couple of things. Um, so, firstly, um, we are using the term here, you know, better and success. Yes. Um, and for me, I think there's something to be to be uh, had by sort of um, qualifying that um, in, in, in a sense of using the kind of systems. Uh, systems thinking, some something around obviously synergy and synteny, 
because uh, I know you talked about better than what the subsets can achieve, so that's kind of indicating synergy. But maybe there's something a little richer we could just add to the to the to the definition because of the the kind of uh, perhaps lens, the sort of systemic lens that we're bringing to to uh, the art and science of collaborology. So I'm going to start taking notes, okay? Uh, so I apologize if I'm actually doing something that doesn't look like I'm focused, but I actually really am. So let me start up a page and let me share that as well. So I'm going to go and stop sharing that definition page and I'm going to share it now. And I'm putting notes, Sam, into a chat. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Okay, so let me just add. Can any of you see this or is it too small? It's fine. Okay, so Gavin, you added that we wanted to add notions of synteny. Alexander, you had the uh, well tribe scalability. Notions of refill all the way up to world. Yeah, and I put a note, I put it in the, in the, in the group chat, I put a little note because also it has to do with the definition of community. And I think we're dealing with this should somehow connect to community, and that has to do with questions of synergy and, yes, and yes. synteny that Gavin was bringing up. Okay, good. And let me add community. And we'll have to connect these later on, okay? So let's just lay these ideas out here. Okay, so I'm gonna just add principles and practices. And I'm sorry for taking up so much bandwidth, but I have one more quick question. Um, the, um, it looks to me like you are using or you have drawn upon the glossary of key terms. Did I share that with you? The glossary of key terms developed? Yes. And in fact, yeah. I've picked and chosen, but also credited some of the terms from your page into my page. Unfortunately, I would love to transclude them, but I don't have that ability right now. So they have been copied, but uh, ideally transcluded. Just one. It looks like they were in there. I just wasn't sure if that was what was going on, yeah, but great. Uh, Fantastic. Let me go back there and share the terms and concepts page. And I think there's a bunch of them that are going to be uh, credited. AL, for example, collating conditions. Uh, AL is you. Uh, here's community. Here's your sense of community. A group of two or more individuals with a shared identity and a common purpose committed to the joint creation of meaning. Right? That's your definition. So here's another one, complexity. So anyway, you'll see that scattered in here are various of your definitions. And this is your column here, the definer column. Uh -huh. By the way, if I've not already shared this page with you, I believe I shared it uh, even at the beginning of the Skype group to all of you. If I've not already shared it with you in a read-write editable uh, link, please contact me because my intent is to share this with everybody and all of you to provide alternate meanings of things so we can have these interesting dialogues so we can say this is what I mean by meaning this is what you mean by meaning and blah 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 all right all right okay just an editorial sorry there's you got a word in the definition of complexity that is put together the very last sentences the very last part says regardless of its degree of complexity ah, sorry. It says offense. Uh, you don't know what offense mean yeah, I was working on that. Yeah, I'm sitting in my office right now. Yeah, we'll have to add, we'll have to add a definition for offense, okay? <laughs> All right, so anyway, um, I wanted to make sure that we started from first principles, which is, is this the right problem? Is this the right definition? And uh, if it takes all, all day or even more, that's great. But I wanted to make sure we got this opportunity to examine the, uh, the axiomatic beginnings of this just so that we don't laugh at each other and, uh, and uh, cry at each other, etc. okay? All right, so uh, let me now go back to my note-taking page. Let me go back to my note-taking page. Okay, great. So I'm trying to gather memes um, for what we may be omitting or have omitted already uh, in this notion of collaborality. Okay, so I've tried to gather all of these so far. And let's see if, let me make this red. 
Okay, so the existing definition ideas, let's make these green. And all the blue ones are the ones that we're adding or considering adding to this. Uh, oh, let me add successful, sorry. Successful, scalable, collaboration. Oh, collaboration. Okay, those are the elements of the current definition or my definition, and I'm looking to meld together all these other ones. By the way, again, one of my wishes is that we could do this together. Uh, so if there's a tool like this that you know of where we can do sort of do this mapping together, and let me just say debate graph doesn't really let me do this because I, I have to alter my mind and reshape my mind to the way debate graph lays things out, unfortunately. So if I could do something like this with another tool, please suggest it, okay? Dino, you had something to say? Yes, I, uh, I have a procedural kind of a proposal, a little, uh, uh, just, just the top of the mountain, little thingy. Uh, we are now uh, exactly in my understanding, and I just want to confirm this with you and everybody else. In my understanding, we are creating, just now, we are co-creating the domain map of collaborology. And the idea is basically this. Uh, we all know about geographical maps. Now, if you want to create a map of collaborology so that important ideas, notions, things, questions also can be put on so that other people can answer them. In other words, so that you can collaborate as a in a collective mind or, or Kodiak style around collaborology, we need a domain map. So can we agree that we are now creating the domain map? And that will mean not only discussing what collaborology is, but actually dis discussing the full spectrum and how to, how to uh, represent it in a visual form and how to interact with it so that. So in other words, we are, we are working on two levels, right? One level is we are creating the content of collaborology, but in, in, on, the, in, on the other level, we're actually creating a domain map and the functionality of the domain map. Dino, can I just double, double check, just in terms of terminology for me? Domain map, is that also uh, related to topic map that Jack, that Jack Park talks about? Uh, it's actually even close, more, yeah, it is, it is uh, related, but it's even more closely related to what Jack calls the knowledge garden. Uh, uh, the idea, the, the, the core idea here is that uh, if you have a domain, right, like whatever domain is, uh, the, the domain of uh, climate change or in this case, collaborology, okay, then we're creating a visual representation of the whole domain. So that a student of the domain, for example, we will have students in Dubrovnik studying collaborology. Now we want to organize the knowledge resources on collaborology so that the students can first of all stand on the mountaintop and see, okay, so collaborology, aha, it has this and this and this and this as sub areas. And then this is, this is how in principle they are related with each other and choose the way of the, the, the learning trajectory, right? I wanna go this way and learn A, B, C and D because that's what I need, right? And so the domain map would basically allow everybody to both locate, to, to both place knowledge resources and then to locate them and learn. Uh, do we have an agreement that this is, uh, in principle, what we are doing, gentlemen, or Sam, is this your understanding also? This is not yet my understanding, and let me answer it this way, okay? Because I'm going to share a different screen, and that is this one right here, okay? This is a site called collaborapedia.info. Collaborapedia.info has not only glossary terms, concepts, etc., which eventually this will become the authoritative version and the spreadsheet, you know, Google Docs version will go away. So I'm hoping that eventually this node of collaborapedia.info becomes the authoritative place and that we can jointly work on this. But you'll notice that it has more than just the glossary terms and terminology. You know, it has the node for collaborology itself, uh, talks about CCCs, the journal, foundational issues, questions. Addressed. So let's look at foundational issues, for example. So some of the questions that I've been putting in here are, what do you know about power structures? What are the modes of failure in collaboration? What does collaboration require of its participants? What is a collaboration opportunity? What is collaboration? You know, how does successful collaboration scale? How much alignment is required? So you can sort of see I've started putting some of these kind of focuses in here. 
And then there's the CCC itself. What is a CCC is a component of your own identity and how do you then use it to align with others? How do you then create collaboration out of it? How do you use it? So I wanted to at least use something that was, how shall I say, um, much more scalable in its association of ideas to each other. Now, I find that there are limitations to this particular tool called the brain. There are also limitations to the diagramming tool I was using called Axon, Axon 2000. There's certainly limitations to the spreadsheet itself, but we can discuss whether or not, you know, I've made the proper choices and selections, but right now, I am thinking of the Axon spreadsheet as just a place for us to take notes today that eventually can then map into this thing, which would, in my current thinking, would become the more authoritative domain map. Okay, so that's my answer to you, Dino. Uh, let me not miss anybody, but I do think that Alexander's hand is up. Uh, Alexander? Just a quick question about uh, the tool. Uh, and I'm sorry if you've already gone over the very basic, simple question. So um, debate graph, uh, I know, you know, uh, David Price and all of his work on that and to what extent that is not being used or is somehow integrated or is not appropriate. I'd like just to know how that works or doesn't work with what you're doing. And also, uh, uh, Ivan also is recently working closely, well, I don't know how closely, but he's gotten, he started conversation with a group that I uh, and familiar with uh, uh, that's doing something called uh, Nuo mapping. Right? It's the Nuo mapping that's trying to map the Nuo sphere. But they have a whole Nuo mapping software which tries to bring out this relational frameworks yeah. uh, in, in a dynamic mapping tool. So I, I'm wondering if those are, first of all, your choice of uh, system, and second of all, is there any interoperability with debate graph and neural mapping or other things? And uh, I think that would be really important for the kind of things that you and Frode are working on particularly to be able to create this kind of interoperable um, uh, way of sharing and creating meaning. Over. Ivan? Yeah. So as uh, for no map, which I have been in touch with, they are finishing their prototype. And the, so it is not yet I would say it's not yet a tool we can like particularly use, but we can keep it in mind and now we can share their videos. And I think it can be an interesting way to map definition for like for the main map, which is definitely a new way of representing information because they use holonic database, like based on holons. I don't know to which extent you all are familiar with the concept of holons, but mm -hmm. and uh, but so the current situation. I would say that they will be releasing the version later in the summer. So I think they will be may, they may be presenting it during IEEE S event, and they definitely will be releasing it and giving it as a tool during our Cyprus event, which I don't know to which extent Sam is aware of all our other events. We should probably have a, some chat with Sam just to update him on the other projects that Alexander, Dina are in part of like a Protopia Labs. But, and uh, I, th I think as for NOMAP, right now it's not, as I said, just to summarize, it's not something which can be like right now a tool, but we should definitely see how it can be used in the later stage. Okay, so uh, let me then uh, also take my feeble attempt to answer uh, Alexander's question. Uh, and that is that, Alexander, I am not satisfied right now with any of the tools. I'm not completely satisfied with any of the tools I'm using. I like aspects of them. I like, uh, uh, in fact, a lot of certain of these, but nothing is the total of what ought to be a DKR, okay? And its interaction mode uh, leaves much to be desired. Uh, so I use different tools for different purposes, and unfortunately that means that there's copies and remnants and old versions laying around and old tools when I finally decide that, okay, I've gone through the brainstorming phase of this particular project. I want to go into kind of either a production phase or a publication phase or a collaboration phase. I have to use something else that's better for those purposes, and then you know, I don't get the ability to continue doing the brainstorming as well, for example. And that's one way 
for me to respond to you on debate graph. Debate graph allows you to look at things in a very large global um, outline, or it allows you to look at these bubbles that are you know, kind of stemming from a single node. And other than that, um, I don't get to lay it out the way, for example, I've laid out these notes here. I, I can't just say over here, I've got something, over here, I've got a set of other things, like, like here, and over here, I'm taking uh, small little ideas and just putting them there until I find a way to connect them. Same thing over here, but these are different ideas than the ones that are over here, right? These are event ideas, and these are kind of like tool kind of ideas. So, unfortunately, some of the tools, MindMeister, mind mapping, blah, 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 they require this notion of a central or root node. And I just think that's just entirely uh against the way i want to think you know what is my root node when i'm trying to look at this whole load i could take collaborology and make it that way but really you know we've meandered into other topics you know and it's not directly related to uh, right so i just wanted to say uh i don't like these tools but i'm really in search of tools all the time okay so if I, that you're 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 a fun guy i mean you're like the, the rhizome <clears throat> that's why a fun guy because uh, you have the rhizomes, I mean, you don't have a central node. Fungus or a colony of fungi, yes. <laughs> Just a fun guy. Looking to connect, you know, in, uh, what is that? That was a long word that begins with M. <laughs> Mycelium. Um, the, uh, but the really, the question about the interoperability, and I think it's something you and Frode have been looking at a lot. So it, it, whatever platform you're using, the more interoperable it is with other platforms, the easier it is not to have these fragments of things on one platform and then on another as you transmit. So again, I think that would be a great criteria for selection of platform, the way it can it, it connect with, if possible, or this is what perhaps what uh, Frode is working on uh, in some way, shape or form in terms of future text issues. Um, I think that would be fantastic to be able to have something more. Yeah, it is, it is a fundamental question. Uh, right now, I would say that the Integration uh, is only available to the form of links. Every one of the tools I've got, of course, you know, handles links. So you can point from one thing to another. But transclusion is not possible. Restructuring and different views right now is not possible, uh, at least the way that I want to do it. And even collaboration, you know, is not possible with many of these tools. Now, with Debate Graph, Debate Graph is very good with collaboration. But the views that I want and need um, aren't yet there in uh, debate graph. So I find in debate graph, I almost rarely ever use the bubble view. I always go into outline view. And then of course you miss the cross connections between nodes. Anyway, so that's my rant, minor beef uh, with this. Uh, Dino, and by the way, welcome Matt. I just saw you join. Yeah. Thank you guys. Dino? No, I, I, I could say that we, we, can, we can still agree that we are, in principle, uh, designing the domain map in the following sense. Uh, we are using the existing tools. We are the main mapping, essentially, and we are getting frustrated because, uh, you know, this is what is happening. Uh, what you people are discussing, you're saying, this doesn't work, and this doesn't work, and uh, this functionality is missing, but ultimately we do need a domain map, I think, to, to collaborate online and uh, I think whatever we want to call it, you know, uh, knowledge garden, domain map, there are all kinds of names out there, uh, the dynamic knowledge repository, et cetera, et cetera, right? But we do need the tool, T. Uh, well, on that I will not disagree with you. I think that uh, I've been, I've been looking for us to build this for a couple of decades and I've been incapable of doing it myself. I do little bits and pieces of it, but they take so long and they take so much energy and money that uh, this whole vision, I think, is uh, something that's been beyond me. It takes collaboration. Yeah. yeah. So it's interesting then that we may consider adding to the core parts of collaborology the tools. Yes, we have practices which is close to it, but just basically also tools and having an outline of the technical tools we have out there for collaborology can be also a big step. I will agree with that. In fact, let me turn that green then because tools is one way we have to scale. You know, if we don't actually leverage the technologies that we have, we're actually not availing ourselves of one dimension of scalability. 
Now, uh, here is something that I think you will appreciate, Sam. Uh, we are adding uh, subdomains to the domain. Uh, there is some kind of math, mathematics of collaborology, and I think uh, ultimately the CCCs and things like that will, will fall in there, maybe some kind of understanding of evolution and things. But uh, your, the definition that you uh, put down in the very beginning, uh, co 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 what successful means, successful, uh, uh, what was it called? No, successful, successful was something that scales into better versions, versions the, the bigger it becomes. Obviously not, not the opposite, right? Uh, and so uh, one could then ask, okay, so what is needed in some mathematical sense, in some rigorous sense? And I'm, I'm referring to the fact that collaborology somehow associates with scientific discipline. And my sense is that there is a scientific discipline here in the making, uh, which even in the conventional sense, right, where we are uh, asking, uh, putting down the re uh, definitions that can be turned into theories. And then uh, the challenge that uh, the definition of collaborology invites is what exactly is needed so that collaborology can be, in quotes, successful, right? What kind of tools and practices, etc. Exactly. Like yes. So, so I'm saying, the domain, I think that's, uh, that, that's, that's a beautiful way. I, I, I like that way of creating a domain because then suddenly we, we have... <clears throat> the aura of being scientific. Okay. By the way, uh, for Ivan, Ivan's and uh, probably Matt's benefit, uh, where we did start today was with at least my current working version of the definition of collaborology. Okay. And I start here with this, the principles and practices of successful scalable collaboration, to which I think we've now uh, acknowledged that the tools is definitely a uh, missing entire meme here. But there's an alternate early version of it. Back when I was not calling this collaborology, it was collaborapology or something like that, some much good, a less good term. But it was called the science of collaboration, specifically how collaboration scales, how it manages to become better than any proper subset of any group or community. Okay, so I think this notion I still need to put into uh, my current working definition here. In other words, as you grow from two to n, it would be nice to see monotonically improving product, quality of output, eh, eh, whatever you're producing with that team ought to be better when your team grows, ideally, if you've really understood collaborology well, and if the team is really collaborating, okay? All right. <clears throat> um, so let me get back to the uh, notes here. Can I make a comment? Please do. Um, so I, I get why scalable is attractive, right? Because part of the core of the concept of collaboration and, and I think how you're framing collaborology is that there is value to be gained from cooperating. And so if you have larger amounts of cooperation, you're able to gain increasing amounts of value. But um, as I understand it, value is always in context. And, and the way I think about pretty much all of this stuff is um, seeking out um, the appropriate, not even seeking, but there's, there, to, to Dino's point, there, to, there seems to be a mathematics uh, of, <laughs> of utility, <laughs> right? Like, uh, nature chooses useful over true. Um, and there's at some point where you get, f the details get small enough and, and distant enough from having impact that they become irrelevant and they start to get ignored. And, um, and, and we, we cease gaining benefit from gaining awareness. Right. So for instance, I am not aware of the, the, the state of all of the atoms in my body. That's a, that's a level of information that, that exists and is there, but, but I'm not tuned into that. I'm not paying attention to that until there's a problem, until the state of those atoms is that, that they are so excited there's so much heat there that it's causing me pain that I have some ability to sense that in some way. So 
for me, and I think also for a lot of the folks that I work with on the MetaCurrency project, we think about this as largely an information landscape and that you have um, that kind of a point that we made a minute ago about tools and practices and all that, that you, you build up a, a, found, a, a layer at which there is communication occurring. And then once you have that as kind of a stable layer, you can build other things on top of that. And you see new patterns emerge. And that's, this is kind of the way in which these things are fractal, right? Kind of to Dino's point, you have one, you have a new layer that emerges and then there's a whole new set of patterns that can occur on top of that. And then once those become somewhat stable, they create a context in which new patterns can occur on top of those. Um, and, but, but communicating across all those layers, yes, it does occur, but when you get too distant, you start to lose the benefit, the, the cost-benefit ratio gets out of whack, right? It sometimes, be, it, it, it at some point becomes too costly to become aware of things that are so far away from you um, that it's useful, uh, at least over specific time scales. So, um, the, the, while I, like, the, to kind of wrap this all up, while I see scalable as, as right, there's this tension that always exists, right? There's a tension that exists there between um, the value of knowing and the cost of keeping track <laughs> of everything, I guess would be the way to put it. So I'll, 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 I'll cut it off there. No, I, I think that's a very valuable notion. I, I hook it to a lot of different other ideas that uh, we and the Amigos have brought up if not entirely understood at least a few of them I'm going to mention and uh, I will then drop it because I think those were fairly self-evident number one is just you know, take your example of scalability you know the sciences exist at various different scales of physical phenomena and it is therefore useful to think in a biological term of a lot of biological phenomena and behaviors and recommendations and prescriptions etc without necessarily getting to the quantum effects of what's going on, or at least it's still useful. It may still be useful to understand the quantum effects sometime in the future in biology, but there's much to be reaped from biology even still without that understanding. Likewise, you know, from organizational design, you know, you can talk about teams at an organizational level and not necessarily have to talk about how my big toe is in my individual sense, right? Eventually, in some sense, there's a notion of how the individual shows up Great collaboration that will still impact that. But again, there are useful domains of knowledge that are at various different scales of physical phenomena. I completely agree with you that the first approximation can be that. And uh, we're still struggling you know, to really understand the right level. And in the software architecture standpoint, what is the proper information uh, necessary to reveal for any possible dynamic to happen? In other words, this is the notion of implementation hiding, you know? You hide things behind an API, you have a, a contract that actually defines the uh, behavior. Uh, there is some noise. It's Ivan. Ivan, oh. you need to put yourself on mute. Okay. So anyway, uh, I do completely agree with your main point. I, I think that there are nuances to that that we would like to explore later on, but then those nuances themselves could represent this danger that you, re you actually uh, have itemized. So let me just stop right there, okay? Yeah, and, and I, I will just uh, make the last point that the participants in any collaboration have a perspective. And it's from that perspective that they will make a judgment about which level of Zooming is appropriate for them. And for me, this is the, the place where the tools become interesting, right? The, the tools are useful in just uh, augmenting our abilities to kind of jump where we're focusing. And that, that to me spoke to what you had mentioned earlier about tool uh, of views. I heard, I heard comments about being able to basically take this view on it and take that view on it. But in order to take different views, you have to have all access to all those inputs and they have to, you have to have ways of receiving this signal and then uh, spitting out a different signal, i.e. interpreting that in some way. So, yeah. Exactly, thank you. So I want to make sure that uh, that is fully acknowledged because I think that's a big topic all by itself. I want to get back also to Gavin's uh, 
idea, which is, of course, this context or possible. I think what you're hinting at is how does one or how does the team determine what is success? And I think that's, of course, a question to be begged by this definition. And I'm leaving it that way because I think explicit recognition of how you look at success is, of course, key to how uh, teams form and how teams will actually decide to stay together. Um, whether it's that one person defines you know, what success is or everybody together evolves what the notion of success is, there's clearly a lot of uh, nuances there as well. And I didn't want that to be part of the definition. I think that's part of the domain of study. And I just wanted to acknowledge that, Gavin, but say that I think right now to incorporate that in the definition, I think would be, I don't know yet how to incorporate that in the definition. So I'm leaving it as a subdomain of this entire area of study. Over. Do you know? No, maybe I can jump in. Yeah, I mean, my sense is that what uh, Matthew was just saying was uh, very much in symphony uh, with what I have been trying to say. And uh, I'm just trying to see if we can uh, reach some kind of framing which will uh, propel us into a successful collaboration uh, from here on. And so uh, let's say that we are a team. We are doing something, right? And that something is collaborology. We are creating collaborology. Now we need a tool, right? And we need some kind of physical material in which uh, to put collaborology in. I propose that we call that the, the domain map. I, I'm, I'm not saying that it has to be that name. I'm saying that we need an object, right? We need a tool. And so at this moment, we are looking at the screen and the SAMS tools, and that's kind of a mock-up of and then by interacting, we are essentially uh, using collaborology and creating collaborology in, in the same, at the same time. I want to say that this is inevitable, right? Because collaborology that would not be walking its talk would obviously be late, right? And then the question is, what is the definition here? Uh, you know, what, what, uh, how do we co-create the definition? And uh, I think there is something to be said for uh, having perhaps multiple definitions that, that different people can, or I mean, definitions that exist anyway in, in the world. <clears throat> we, try to, we try to federate them in the sense that there is a shared definition that is always kind of dynamically evolving. And then, uh, and then people come with their own definitions which, which they need for a specific paper or something or other and so on and so forth, right? And so then the question is, how does this integrate into And this is what essentially uh, Matthew was saying. He was saying that there is a whole kind of, uh, um, F fractal hierarchy of, of views of, uh, of basically anything, right? And so if we talk about the, the domain map, which represents somehow the thing that we are creating, it has to be somehow, it has to have this kind of hierarchy of views thing. Um, I hope I'm being uh, sufficiently clear. Um, I don't want to take more time explaining, yes. Let me also add that uh, it's with that objective in mind that I shared this blog entry called The Eight Artifacts, okay? So uh, basically an implicit uh, proposal was to do something uh, like creating an eight artifacts for this group of people who are considering becoming a team. I'm not gonna be so brash as to say that we are a team right now because we haven't even figured out what problem we're addressing yet. We're still kind of interested in discussing for ourselves whether or not there is an alignment that, that's possible here. And the definition discussion, I think, is part of that alignment. But if we actually do form as a team, then we actually will do want to decide what to do together, how we measure ourselves, how we actually produce something, and how we actually make an impact in the world. And those, I think, are uh, better served if we actually have some kind of a, a memory for this particular group of people. And that's what the eight artifacts are trying to be, is that memory that is shareable and workable and something that we could actually then evolve together. So if I may just uh, refer uh, even just verbally back to the blog entry called The Eight Artifacts, uh, that's essentially what the proposal was. This, by the way, the terms and concepts is one of those artifacts, okay? So I wanted to make sure that at least those eight minimum were seen as useful and that we could then have proposals around how we set ourselves up as a team if we choose to become one. Dino. 
Yeah, I, I would like to just add, add a little bit of uh, wood into the fire by saying that uh, we have a concrete goal that is collaborology course in Dubrovnik. Uh, we are working on bringing some real students, uh, both company and university, and we are offering collaborology to the world. And so we do need a domain map. Uh, in the sense that different people are coming with different modules, we're creating a transdisciplinary body of knowledge. People come from their disciplines and things. What do they do with the knowledge? I mean, we are going to do, uh, everybody creates a lecture and goes home, right? So somehow this has to be integrated. People have to be, we have to explore the connections and so on and so forth, right? So we do need, and, and uh, uh, the course is conceived so that the student in the beginning of the course is standing on the top of the mountain and looking at the domain of collaborology. And so we do want to present, and then the student essentially uh, writes the learning itinerary for the exam on the domain map, right? So we do need a domain map. And, and uh, so I'm saying, let's use collaborology course to actually create a domain map. By creating a domain map, create our own interaction. Okay, so what is the best proposal for how we create that today? Again, I'm struggling because I'm not happy with any of these individual tools. And I, yet, I know we have to do this, okay? So I know that uh, you've used debate graph, and I think you use it uh, reasonably happily. Uh, Ivan, uh, Matthew, others, Gavin, Alexander, what, what do you guys use? Nothing I can recommend. And uh, with debate graph, I do agree, Sam, with you that it has this problem of like, putting it randomly on a page. I think the bad graph can be used, but I have some considerations. I think it is a little bit too complex for our needs right now in terms of like the amount of knowledge they're using. And, mm -hmm. and also just, okay, since I'm speaking right now, I, I wanted to put this point some time ago that at some moment we also should think of making it cross language and it's not just translating, because once we're talking about such words just as collaborology, this is no 100% translation into Russian. Like you can translate word tool, but once you're getting into more abstract concepts, it can be just overlaid, but cannot be 100% translatable. And uh, I hope we, should, we would at some point be ready to embrace such complexity as well and see <clears throat> how work on this. Yeah, I, I fully but Right now, I think we can even, yeah, just to like clarify what is our starting points and how to move. I'm fine with using whatever, even Google Doc, where we just take those several definitions we're using, I'm totally fine. <clears throat> okay. Uh, others, I think Matthew, did you have something? Um, I do not have a tool. Um, however, I, I may have a, a viewpoint. <laughs> um, and that is, in, in my understanding, we're not, you know, the, the, the task that, that has been laid out here is not necessarily to create a discipline and it's not necessarily to create a domain. Um, it's, it's, though that is a way of framing it. It's, it feels to me like the goal here is to create a community. And um, the, the, as I understand it, the way that you get community is through communication. And so the main tool, it seems like one you've already put in place, is these conversations. And these other tools, they will be useful as well because they will ena enable us to communicate in different ways. I don't really have a, this is going to be the one, you know, on, on lock, but I think we're gonna make use of a bunch of these different things. And to kind of Ivan's point, written artifacts are useful tools, but they aren't going to create the community because that only happens through communication. And so when we start to jump language barriers, it's going to be storytelling across those language barriers that really does the heavy lifting. It's going to be people who are able to, to translate and communicate and, or even using Google Translate as a tool, right? And, and, and not just as a one-time, it's been written onto the page, but as a conversation facilitator, you know, 
I say this and you go, oh, do you mean like that? And then I go, no, 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 not quite like that. You know, I'm, it's really more like this. And that's what conversation is about, right? It's about this back and forth process of trying to create alignment between two different people's worldviews. And sorry, the room I'm in, the light turns off when, the, <laughs> when, the, uh, when I don't move very much. And um, in part, the, the task that you guys are, are taking on is complicated by just that fact, right? We're pretending as if we are going to create this team, this coherence layer that is separate from ourselves. And in reality, what's happening is we are creating tools that enable us to, to come to some alignment. But the, the place where that is written is on the brains of each of us as individuals, right? So <laughs> at the end of the day, like the, the, the place where it lands is in, in that, I don't know, that's the medium that it gets written. In. There isn't some external medium that just beams into all of our heads. And so, you know, this is, this is what makes collaboration hard. It's also what makes it dynamic, that you can have this alignment, and yet you can have some disagreement. You can have some differences of worldview and differences of opinion, and those differences are what make that group resilient, right? It's what enables there to be innovation and novelty and all of that, that amazingness. So I know that was sort of another wander into the fields of philosophical entreaty, but... Um, yeah, I, I think that's part of why there isn't some uh, perfect tool. Um, there's a good tool for, for accomplishing a particular type of communication or for getting us to a point where we have, uh, you know, there's a balance there, right? Like you, get, you, you start to map out these terms, and the better you map out those terms, the more useful they become as shorthand for enabling the members of the group to communicate. And at the same time, by that very fact, the more difficult it becomes to onboard new people into the community because they've got to jump this hurdle of learning all the terms that the members of the community have learned. And that's just, a, that's just a, the nature of communication and the nature of group formation. So, you know, I'll leave it there. Um, can I just jump in really quickly? Um, uh, thanks, Matthew, for, for, for bringing up community. Um, because I've been thinking, of the, and apologies for the background noise here. Um, I've been thinking about, obviously, the strong connection with uh, Sam's communities of impact. Uh, and, and basically a kind of, um, you know, using collaborology as, uh, if you like, a, almost like a... a a kernel of a of a of an OS, or you know, uh, that, that's obviously ever evolving. Uh, because a friend of mine is is about to begin what she's calling a fast experiment, uh, F A S S T. So freedom, accountability, structure for systemic transformation, and she's using holacracy as a like a kernel, right? Just just a starting point, as opposed to starting from scratch. Um, so I just thought I'd, I'd mention that and throw that into the group as well. Okay, uh, thanks, Gavin. Um, anybody else? Because I don't want to monopolize the, uh, the discussion. Uh, Alexander, I feel that in my mind you've got something to say here. I, I do. Yes. I do. Um, I, I entirely agree that this is a sort of figure and ground or you know, map and territory. Uh, what we're doing in the mapping here is not the conversation. Uh, it's about enabling conversation, with, to Matthew's point. Um, and that is about forming community or curating community um, and to Gavin's point and uh, and I do also think that it's where it lands is actually more in the heart than in the mind or in the brain I think I think this is this is about connecting uh, in um, affectively primarily um, and uh, getting a sense of um, I hear you you know, I, I and, and and not just I'm listening to you, but I re, I hear you. I, that that lands with me. Um, so how do we build those bridges? Like Matthew was saying, a lot of it's interpreting and saying, not trying to tear each other down, but trying to say. So if I understand you correctly, you're saying this. I'm just repeating what Matthew says, basically. But uh, yeah, that that's that's the uh, I think that's the key. I see this therefore being fundamentally about connection. Um, so we are we're setting up uh, a 
connection system. Um, collaborology is is creating uh, connections, but now the connections are in the maps, but they're also connections to heart space, they're connections through ideas. Uh, it's connecting us to life. It's connecting us to meaning. Um, and the meaning is co-created. So all of this is through, it's not individually asserted, uh, but it's uh, uh, collectively curated or emerged. That was what I really like about this framing that brings out the collective intelligence uh, potential. I, this is where I think we're, we're swimming in this area of collective, uh, connective intelligence, collective intelligence, and collective creativity, you know, that, that flow. Um, two more things, quick, uh, well, hopefully quick. Uh, in terms of uh, tools, um, I, I think, um, I think Global Brain is one of the best. Um, I do also like Debate Graph. And then there's uh, Mindomo. I, if you've had a chance to look at Mindomo, it's also an interesting mapping uh, software. And uh, Murally. Um, but Murally is something that is more, uh, it's really good for laying out um, uh, like sticky note form, right? You know, and then you can clump the sticky notes, but it's all kind of like the sticky note uh, virtual world, um, but it's very good, with an M, Murally, not Murally. In Mindomo, you got right. Um, but Murally is Mural dot L-Y, right? It says Mural dot L-Y, Mural Lee. Um, and so those are two. And then the final thing just about, uh, there's a concept in, in, in systems uh, terminology, and again, what we're, I'm aware of, uh, Matthew's call not to to use jargon. Uh, the notion of the system in place. in the back. Yo, am I there? Sorry. Uh, Sorry, no. I'm, I'm just saying there was some uh, background noise coming through. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, my, I was messing with the um, with the cord. So the notion of the system in focus. Gracias. Um, of the system in focus, uh, where. You know, you lose definition, you get lost in the details, as, as just to Matthew's point, when you, when you zoom, you know, in, in scaling up, but also when you scale down, when you get lost in the cells, like in, I mean, even that example, of like knowing what all your billions of cells are doing in your body, you don't need to know all that. So always being able to identify what is the system in focus. And then from there, you can choose your super systems and your subsystems. And then, of course, it's always nested. You have then the supra supra systems and the sub subsystems. You can keep going up and down in both directions. The more you go, the more information there is to process, and the more it can be, lead to simply complicatedness uh, rather than an appreciation of the entanglement and the interdependence. Um, so, being able to select the system in focus, and then being able to both follow the downward causal frames and the upward causal frames, right? This is where we're looking at not just at the systemic leverage points, which are the upward causal frames, but also looking at the systemic nurturance spaces. What are the spaces we create that invite certain types of behavior, that invite certain ways of connecting, um, and uh, these systemic nurturance spaces um, are, um, in Gavin's terms, uh, these are the possibility spaces or the possibility base uh, Gavin would sometimes talk about it in those sense but it's it's uh, creating that holding container that elicits certain types of interaction and therefore certain types of collective behavior over again I will not monopolize but I will make sure others have a chance to speak okay I am uh, cognizant of the fact that it's actually at the hour now. Um, and in fact, uh, what I'm proposing is this, that this has actually been very, very helpful to me to understand what components people care about in this large space uh, that we're calling collaborology right now. May I invite each of you to go to the terms and concepts page and add your favorite definition of collaborology to that page. If you do not actually have an access link to that page, please let me know and I'll give you one. 
Short of that, you could just send on Skype or via email your definition. But I think it'd be an interesting exercise to see you actually put it in that page itself. And before I go on to the next part of it, Ivan has something to say. Ivan? I like your idea, but the page you were showing and the page you shared, it's just enormously big to grasp from the first view. So if you would be so kind to take those elements which you think are key for our conversation right now, like several definitions of collaborology and maybe 10, 15 other definitions where we should start and take them to a separate spreadsheet or maybe linking it somehow. But I'm just getting frustrated once I open like such a huge uh, spreadsheet and, and just feeling, yeah, like, Trying to understand all of those things is uh, I'm lo losing the essence of like uh, in my focus. So that could be helpful if we just start from a smaller scale document, I think. Yeah, I, I can definitely see your point. I think uh, this, I'm struggling to not do a minor rant that I often do around the word copy. So let me stop myself. Uh, but let me consider your suggestion very carefully and figure out how I can do what you ask. Maybe highlight those which you think are the most valuable with some color. Okay, that could be right. a great to go. Okay, let me, get, let me send around that page with certain, let's say, no more than six definitions highlighted where I'd like for you to actually focus initially, okay? <clears throat> All right, let me do that. Um, and is there anything else that uh, should uh, be proposed before we do this again next week? I mean... I'm, I, I want to avoid the feeling that we're making slow progress, but at the same time, I don't want to skip things that will end up being important. So that's a little uh, balance right here. Ivan? Uh, so my proposition is to create some short uh, information about participants. So I'm looking at Gavin, and I remember him speaking last time, but I would really love to have, like, be able to see an update, like, to see – to have a reference while we are speaking about what is his project, or well, like Matthew about meta currency, just and then we have we will have Leah who might like who I will not remember next time. So if we have this page and once people are talking, we can also open it and remind ourselves who is where the person comes with, from, which background. Even some small idea there. Okay, excellent. Uh, let me. You know, a contacts page or a directory usually is one of these artifacts that you use to create a team. Uh, so we've actually identified two now, you know, the terms and concepts and the directory itself. There's six others that I'm not going to even talk about. But let me at least say I will get a start on the contacts page. I'm going to put in placeholders for each of you and that uh, each of you hopefully <clears throat> between now and next Wednesday adds a bit more information to that uh, contacts page. And I will then highlight about half a dozen, no more than that, definitions in the terms and concepts page. And each of you hopefully then goes in and provides your favorite memes that seem to be missing in those definitions or even provides an entire alternate definition. I don't even care if it's bad. I think that if it's there, then it's possible for us to interact on it, okay? Uh, so with those two in a sense, activities be sufficient for us to carry through the momentum between here and next week? I see some nodding heads. I see a thumb up. Okay, good. <clears throat> I am going to be sensitive to time. Uh, I do have to go pick someone up uh, very, very shortly. So let me summarize that and do exactly what I just described and also uh, end by thanking all of you for showing up again today. I'm hoping again Dr. Lee uh, will join us next week. I will give her this video as well as share it with all of you. Uh, by the way, did anybody uh, look at the video from last week uh, ever? Gavin, you're, you're nodding your head. Yeah, because I think I went back to it myself and uh, Sanok went back to it as well. And that's why it got her so interested in uh, participating with us. So I'm hoping that uh, these continue to be useful. Okay, with that, at uh, .05, um, I am looking forward to continuing this with you all again next week. Okay? Bye for now. Okay. Stop sharing and end the meeting. Ivan.